Hello, this is a lecture I'm going to do partially standing humped over because I want you to see this uh, board and what I have on it. And this will serve as a kind of a introduction to the introduction of how a speech goes together, uh, processing from uh, the time of doing your research until the time of uh, organizing your speech and getting ready to present the speech. So this isn't the whole thing from beginning to end, but it, it does take into account the research and how we get to our main points, and then it will go on from there. So this will, uh, lecture kind of combines content from uh, the chapter on outlining your speech and organizing your speech and a few other places. So it's just as a, like I said, an overview uh, to give you an idea of how this process works of where, uh, where does the process go from our research ending up in our speech. So, uh, and some of this material will be covered in other chapters, as I just said, but I wanna give this to you. So you're gonna watch this speech. It's kind of an extra video to watch, but I think it will help you get the idea. So sorry if I'm out of the picture sometimes. Okay, so let's get started by thinking about, you got your topic, you kind of know where you wanna go with it, but now you're gonna start doing your research. So when you go online, or theoretically you would go to the library, or look up books or articles or uh, journals or watch videos, to gather information about your topic that you have already selected. We got some great topics coming up. Some I'm very, very excited about because I've never heard them and I think they're kind of a, a mind stretching opportunity. Okay, so I call this the research cloud. And the research cloud is when you're watching, reading, reviewing, listening, uh, interviewing, whatever you're doing to gather information about your topic, I, I call it a cloud, a research cloud, because it really doesn't have any shape to it yet. No formal lines or categories, but it's just kind of a building of content and information about your topic. So, and I, I put it in these little bundles, kind of clouds within clouds, because what will happen is you will notice as you're doing your research that your topics, while you don't have them in mind, your topics will kind of sort of quite often reveal themselves. Even though you don't know what your main points are, they, you notice that the content, the material that you are uh, researching and gathering together starts to coagulate into different categories all by themselves. And you'll notice it's like, oh, I'm doing a research project or my speech is on cars. And I notice I'm gathering a lot of information about engine size. And that kind of comes together. And I notice I'm, I'm gathering a lot of information about uh, style, body style and body design. And so that's kind of becoming its own point. And so while it's not hard and fast yet, it's, it's you're recognizing that, that these items that I see coming up over and over may very well become my main points. I didn't pick them. I didn't uh, go in with an idea in mind. It's just kind of happening. And so it's within this bundle of content, of research information, that it may be that your main points are revealing themselves. So I've kind of put numbers on them already. Notice also I have a couple of little clouds here that don't have a number on them. And that illustrates how you're going to gather more information than simply what you're planning on using in your speech. You're just going to run across some things, and they're interesting. So you want to gather these and write them down and don't lose them because you may end up using them or you may not, but you don't want to just toss them aside and then later go, oh, that would have been another great point, or I could have assimilated that point into point number two over here, but I don't have it anymore. So go ahead and get it. In fact, on the chapter on gathering information, it tells you write things down, get it clear, Write down more than you might need, might you, you, more than what you might think you need, because you might end up using it and wanting it later on. So when you're researching, that would be the time to capture it. Okay, so that's your research cloud. So you've got all this information, probably on paper. I, I write everything down by hand when it comes to taking notes. 
I'm not a good typist. I never learned how to type. I'm a two or three finger typist even to this day. Uh, my kids all learned like what in third or fourth grade they took a they had a course in school on keyboarding. I never had that. So anyway. I write everything down, but you got your notes on your computer or whatever. Please back up your notes. You would hate to lose them and then have to go do it again. You don't want that. Okay, so you've got this cloud growing. Now you will notice that I have these lines going down. The lines going down illustrate that at some point, all this research has got to turn into a speech. It's got to go from these general vague categories to being more specific what are going to end up being your main points. And that's why I then switch my word picture from talking about a cloud to buckets. Because buckets hold things, right? Number one. Second, buckets are distinct and unique from one another. And what there's probably a, a philosophical or physiological law out there uh, that says that an item can only be in one place at one time. So if you put content in number one, likely that's where it's going to stay. And then two and three, you get it all. And by the way, you can have a fourth point if you want, or a fifth point even, as the textbook tells you, between two and five. Uh, I just only have three listed here. And then these other two might represent that you're thinking these might be main points, but you're not. You decided not to use them. Okay, so we got our research information. We kind of begin to see what our main points might be. And then they come down here and we said, this is main point number one, main point number two, and main point number three. Clear, distinct from each other. Every once in a while, somebody will do a speech and I can't tell, did they move from their first point to their second point? Is their second point and third point? Can I see the difference in the two? It's hard to tell. So make sure they're clear. And in fact, I have four comments about your uh, main points down here. And this is covered in the textbook, but just uh, to touch on it clearly. Number one, make sure they are distinct. Make sure that you're, you are very clear in what your main points are. Sometimes they can kind of flood over to one another. Make sure this is main point in one, two, and three. And we're going to talk about transitions uh, at some point. So make sure you have clear transitions that take you from one to the other. Second is when it comes to your main points, wording your main points is very important. Now, remember that your most important goal, believe it or not, is not to for you to necessarily give a great speech. Your primary goal is to give a speech that your audience will understand, learn, be persuaded, know more about the topic, start doing something they weren't doing before, stop doing something they are currently doing if it's a persuasive speech. But that's what your goal is. But here's the thinking. If I have a clear, organized, processing speech that my audience can remember, then that's going to make a great speech. So in a sense, don't set out to start doing a great speech. Set out to be clear and articulate and give a great presentation so that your audience will get it and that will be end up being a great speech. Does that make sense, the difference in the two, what you're, what you're really aiming for? Now, in this class, we are creating an artificial uh, environment where more your goal is to learn how to give a great speech, and it is more about you. Because that's what the speech is, to learn how to speak uh, better in front of other people. And the goal is you and to be better and to have skills and to be a better presenter. But when this is over, again, it switches to the audience, to the others, to be audience-centered in your presentation, which we already talked about. Okay, so we talked about being distinct, clear, distinct points. Make sure they are clear. That's why I use buckets, because they are clear. A cloud's not distinct. It's this kind of a mass of uh, water vapor molecules, whatever. Um, but now here it's going to be clear and distinct, and what's in one is not in another. Wording. We're going to word our topics, our main points, so that they are clear to the audience, because if it's clear, 
And if it has some kind of memory device built in, they might remember it better because remember our goal is to help them remember the speech so they can walk out of the class being greater, more informed or persuaded. And so if I can use tools like even how I word my main points is going to be helpful. Now, I use about three different methods in my wording my main points. Sometimes I will use all the first letter of each one. So if I'm talking about, for example, a speech on the 1965 Corvette Stingray, I might talk about the, uh, the original planning of the, of the Corvette Stingray with the designers and the automakers. I might talk about the uh, power of the Corvette Stingray with its engine size and all that. And then I might talk about the uh, popularity of the Corvette Stingray and how people really like the design, a very popular car. And so it's a P, P, and P helps my audience remember that better. And that was better because they remember it. And if they remember it, it means they're getting more out of it. Uh, maybe some word within the speech by, uh, by the designing of the sentence. So I may talk about, and I'll use the same illustration of the Corvette Stingray. I might talk about the origin of the Corvette Stingray, and that's how I'd say it. First, let's talk about the origin of the Corvette Stingray. Second, let's talk about the uh, design of the Corvette Stingray. And third, let's talk about the price of the Corvette Stingray. Now, notice they don't all begin with the same letter, but the sentence is very similar where I'm using that of the Corvette Stingray each time over and over, which helps them remember as well. Sometimes I would do that because I could not think of all the same say, uh, of words that began with the same letter. And I'm not going to spend my entire life doing that, but that way they all connect to one another. Another method I would use sometimes is ABC kind of method. Uh, the appearance of the Corvette Stingray. The, uh, the buying of the Corvette Stingray, popularity. And the customization of the Corvette Stingray, how you could kind of make it your own. I don't know if that was true or not. But A, B, and C is another method of helping them remember what I am talking about in that presentation. So wording is important. It's, again, it helps to remember the speech. Okay, third is length. Let's talk about length. We want our main points to be about the same length, which means it's about the same amount of content that I'm talking about point one to point three. Sometimes what ends up happening, we uh, fire our best ammunition in point number one, and pretty point number two, and then point number three doesn't get much attention. We might have run out of time. We might not have found enough information on point number three. And so it, it just looks less. And your audience is going to say when they're listening to that, if you have, uh, let's say you have a six minute speech, a minute for the introduction, a minute for the conclusion, at least four minutes, two minutes on point number one, a minute and a half on point number two, and only 30 seconds on point number three, what's your audience going to think? Well, they're going to think a couple of things. Number one, you did not research very well because you didn't spend enough time on number three. You didn't gather enough information. You didn't plan well enough. Or they might think you didn't prepare well enough. You didn't practice enough because you, you got to number three and maybe you just forgot what you were going to say. So make sure that they have the same about amount of time. And in an informative speech, five to six minutes, that will mean about a minute and a half per main point. Minute for your intro, that might be a little bit long. A minute for your conclusion, which is definitely long, but that's two minutes, three and a half, a five. Am I doing that right? One, two, three and a half, five, six and a half, a little bit long. It's actually about one and a quarter, I guess, minutes. But you see how that works? Plan out how long each main point is and make sure you have enough content from your research to make the third point 
as clear and as strong as the first point. Don't make it feel like you got lazy and just kind of quit early because you wanted to go to bed on your point number three. Okay, order. It's actually O-D-E-R, the R got wiped off there. Uh, there is a strategy for your points. It shouldn't just happen randomly, what goes first, what goes second, and what goes third. When we get to persuasion, I'll just give you a, a fun heads up. They say that if you go, if you think of your three main points and you have strongest evidence or persuasion in your in one point and your weakest, there are some researchers that conclude the best way is start strong and end with your weakest. Others would say start with your weakest, but end with your strongest. What they all say, though, is don't put your strength in the middle, either at the beginning or at the end. Both have um, credence to it, but not in the middle. So there's a strategy for how we put them. In our speeches, the textbook will give you about oh, five or six different ways to organize your speeches, and I have them. They're in the textbook. But I'm going to give you four informative speeches. I'm just going to touch on those three right now. Persuasion has about three or four others that we'll talk about later. So in your informative speech, you're going to go either one method is called chronological. And this works best with your speeches that are process speeches or how-to speeches. Here's how to change a tire. And you're going to say, first, you're going to do this, second, this, third, this, right? Or maybe you're going to talk about a battle uh, during the Civil War. And you're going to say on day one, this happened, or day two, this happened, or day three, this happened. But there's a, a chronological processing of information over time or of sharing of information in steps that logically make sense in the order that they are in. So that's one method for informative speeches. That doesn't work with persuasive. And like I said, how-to speeches are, are best for using it, but you can do other ones as well, an event speech like uh, – the Battle of Gettysburg in the Civil War. A second method is what is called spatial, S-P-A-T-I-A-L, not spatial, S-P-A-C-I-A-L. And this is where you are giving us a guided tour of your topic. Maybe it's the International Space Station. You're going to talk first about the solar panels and then the living quarters and the science quarters and the racquetball court they have up there, right? But you're going to give us a tour saying, first, let's talk about this and this and this, or maybe weather patterns across the United States, Atlantic or the um, Northeast, Southeast, Great Plains, Pacific Northwest, and uh, Pacific Southwest. Or maybe you're going to give us a speech about the Hawaiian Islands, and you're going to, you're going to take us through each island at a time. And then you just have to decide, decide do you want to start with the, the smallest island and build to the biggest or start with the biggest and then work your way down. I would think smallest to biggest. You know why? Because when you get down to the tiny islands, nobody cares anymore, to be honest. So start small and build from there. But you see how it's kind of a space-related item, a, a guided tour. And an informative speech on uh, an event speech would work. A... Uh, object speech would work for that. Probably not a concept, definitely not a concept speech, and probably not a um, how-to speech. Maybe, but probably not. But the one most people use, and by the way, the most popular speech that I hear are object speeches, speeches about a person, a place, sometimes an event, but mostly about people and places. But the most popular type of speech is what I call a topic, what they call a topical speech, where you're basically telling me three items about someone or something. A person you might tell us about their, that's kind of chronological, but never mind. I was going to say their early childhood, their adulthood, and their last years, chronological. Most biographies tend to be written in a chronological pattern, right? Which they walk you through their life. But in a topical speech, you're going to tell us about uh, huskies. You're going to tell us about their color, 
about their popularity and you're going to tell me about their um, um, bad habits. They got lots of bad habits, a lot of yelping, crying, whining. Uh, they can be destructive and they like to escape. We finally got our yard, I think, escape proof after several several years and attempts and all that. But anyway, uh, if you're going to talk about uh, redwood trees, you're going to tell us about where they're found. You're going to tell us about their structure and why they're red. And you're going to tell us about their age. Now, I'd like to hear that speech. Uh, if you're going to talk about... I'm just kind of thinking here, looking out the window. Uh, Ford. I've seen different programs about Ford cars, and we've grow, we have uh, we used to have all three of our cars were all Fords: Expedition, Escape, and Explore. We had three of them um, over the years. Now we switched over to we have actually two Hondas and a Ford. But let's say you're going to talk about the Ford. You're going to talk about the uh, most popular Ford cars. The Expedition, I think, is their number one most popular car of all time. You're going to talk about the Ford uh, Fusion, which I have now, and you're going to talk about the Ford Mustang. So you're just going to tell us about three different cars. And the only thing, the, the points don't have anything necessarily related to each other, except that they all are coming from and talking about your main item, your topic. Uh, you could, so you can do that with anything, but those are the most popular speeches. Uh, if you're going to talk about Ulysses S. Grant, who I read it, just read a uh, biography about him, amazing. You're going to talk about his, uh, his presidency. You're going to talk about his family life, and you're going to talk about his uh, illness and dying. And the fourth point, you might talk about his, um, the biography he wrote at the end of his life, which made him enough money to basically get by after being president. Very interesting. Very sad. But anyway, so that's the topical method. And we're going to talk about a few more when it comes to the other speeches. Okay, so I think that is about it on this topic. But again, it takes you from research to your main points. And after your main points, you're going to develop the rest of your outline, which we're going to talk about uh, making an outline in Chapter 11. And then more related to what I've just been talking about in chapter nine on organization. So anyway, so hopefully this is helpful to you and I'm going to call it quits right there. All right. Thank you.